Um, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce Joy. So born and raised in South Minneapolis, Joy Blewett loves for the arts, was nurtured by her father and frequent trips to local art museums. From the moment she could hold the crayon, she was drawing and painting, dreaming of an artist's life. After graduating from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, she worked as an art director and graphic designer for clients that included Minneapolis Simple Magazine, Macy's Como Park Zoo, and the Children's Theater Company. After illustrating the Phoenix Spirit and facilitating art events for the nonprofit organization Big Brothers Big Sisters, she returned to her love for visual arts with a new focus on teaching. At the University of Minnesota, she completed a master's degree in visual art education and became licensed art teacher in 2013. She now resides in Rochester and teaches art at Bonner Elementary School in Stewartville. Um, just to introduce a little bit about her show, the way Joy talks about vast and which is the theme of her, her paintings and exhibition, it's I think it's it's really poetic. Uh, she says, it wasn't until moving to Rochester that I started to see the sky with the clear eyes and new perspective. The sky is expansive, vast, an endless sea of blues. It stretches out far beyond that what we can see or even explore. It's heaven above us. And I think that really reflects in her painting, paintings. Um, but um, she also has... Um, she also wanted to include her artistic practice, her teacher practice to the, through her exhibition art. And so this exhibition features uh, 35 students' artworks and two of them are uh, with us today, Zoe and Jenny. Uh, so during spring 2020, students explored the rural sky and painting process in art class and began making sketches of their ideas. The lesson quickly shifted into a distance learning project due to the pandemic. With less art teacher guidance, the students have freedom to create and paint with abandon, no restriction. Those artworks demonstrate perseverance, creative, creative visions, and self-expression through a difficult time. Uh, lastly, this activity is made possible by voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Southeastern Minnesota Council. Um, and thanks to the leg legislative appropriation from the Art and Cultural Heritage Fund. And Joy is part of our Ruder program, which um, uh, exemplifies the commitment of the Art Center to be a central hub for uh, art made in Southeastern Minnesota. Um, but now I want to hear from Joy. So uh, among your uh, many beautiful paintings, uh, why don't you tell us a little, a little more about two that, um, that really stand out for you and that you felt very inspired while creating them? Thank you. Um, so I'm Joy Bluett the artist of this series. And first, before I begin, I wanna thank the Rochester Art Center for having this rooted program connection with the Southeastern Minnesota Arts Council so that I was able to have this exhibition. Um, the installation turned out beautiful. I'm really pleased. And, um, whoops. And, and so these are three that start the wall of paintings. And I really wanna talk about this one. This was the first one um, that I painted, but it was also the first vision I had. So five years ago, when I moved down here for the first two weeks, I was commuting from my Minneapolis home to Rochester to um, go through all the teacher preparation, all the teacher stuff early in August. And, and so I was commuting every day and one night when I was traveling from Rochester back to Minneapolis, um, you, you go through all these rolling hills. As I, was, as I was coming up one of the rolling hills, I saw this dirt road that kind of went up over the side and was like disappeared. And it was just, my mind just took like a snapshot of that. And there was a car for sale, an old kind of antique collector kind of car on the side of the road um, for sale. And, and so that's what I wanted to capture in this picture was that dirt road that just kind of disappeared over the hill. And these little snapshots of land that I would capture in, in like my mind when I would, cause I, I don't know, like I know you're supposed to be looking on the road when you're driving, 
um, but the visual person that I am, and this cracked my aunt up when we went on a cross country road trip, that I, I am seeing everything around me, even though I am on the road, I'm watching the road, but I'm, my, my mind and my eyes are just picking up all these things that are happening around me. Um, and traveling and doing all this commuting, especially we go home a lot to Minneapolis. Um, I would travel from Rochester to Stewartville. The sky just was so big. It just made me aware of how small we are here on earth and how there's so much more beyond us. And, um, and I just loved like how the, in this particular moment of me seeing that road, that dirt road disappearing, there was like streaks of clouds across the sky. Like they were mimicking that, that, that convertible car, totally saying road trip. And that's why I called it gravel road. Um, I just, the whole series about how big the sky is and kind of, you know, not to minimize like how small we are, but just that there is something greater, bigger than us. And there's an energy with weather and movement and growth and things growing and dying and just the evolution of life. And, um, and so I would try to capture this in my paintings. Thank you. Um, I think you really do um, show how vast is the sky. We can totally see that. Um, and when it comes to, uh, when it comes to like your audience, is there something, some kind of feeling that you would like people to feel when looking at your paintings? I want them to feel um, well. One thing that I I don't know that this was an intention when I was painting them, but since I was very inspired by the rural landscape on these commutes um, and, the, and the sky and the weather I, and the different parts. I, what's really interesting is that a friend of mine, when I showed this um, painting of the two horses on the hill in the white fence, she recognized it from her drives. And so from Minneapolis to Rochester, there's a huge ranch I can't, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's got a huge white fence that kind of frames it. And one night when I was driving from, um, it was like evening, the sun was going down um, from Minneapolis back to Rochester. I came up over this hill and right there on the hill in this ranch, there were two horses like running to like meet each other. And it was just really beautiful. Of course, I didn't see the clouds like that at that moment. Um, but this is a cloud formation that I saw at a different time as I was planning this painting this past summer. And the clouds off in the distance had this kind of volcanic um, eruption in the far distance. And I just, I felt that that would really fit this idea of the conversation of two horses on this hill. Well, I would, personally invite everybody to like um leave a comment on that if you feel that one looking at joy's painting i do personally feel that i do that commute quite a bit at least once a week and yeah it does really feel really 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 large and the clouds are so interesting to look at uh, yeah sometimes it's kind of hard to like drive and pay attention to the boring <laughs> road um but um there is um it's interesting also to see like the various you know, kinds of uh, skies that you portray. And I was wondering if there's a favorite type of, type of day that you like to portray uh, something that inspires you more. I do have like some night, nighttime, like a nighttime scene of Rochester, of uh, signature with the, the corn cob water tower and sunsets and sunrises, but I really am drawn to weather. And so, I, I had to look up what a derecho was when I first heard that on the news down here. I don't know if I've ever heard derecho up in the city before. Um, and, you know, I, I have witnessed since I've been down here, these kind of shelf clouds of a storm that kind of come take over the sky. And, and so 
this is actually um, this painting, Derecho on the Zumbro River, is an actual house that I see every time I'm driving from Minneapolis to Rochester. And it's tucked in this little forest and it's right on the Zumbro River. And I just loved how kind of square and boxy this house was. And it just, it felt very like a magical house on this river. And, um, and so I thought this would be a perfect ground for this derecho cloud. Um, even though it's like very looming, dark, scary storm about to happen. Um, but just the idea of this, this kind of large cloud that kind of can take over almost like a tornado. But I just, I love clouds. I always have since I was a kid. And, um, but I just, I'm fascinated with them more and weather more since I've moved down here. Yeah, it is a quite interesting experience to like drive through those big clouds. I agree there. It's quite beautiful too. It's also a little terrifying. Um, but um, this is, um, now I have a question that I think it's just kind of, you know, what everybody's asking artists nowadays, right? Uh, what were the challenges of working as a painter and as an art teacher during lockdown and during a pandemic? Yeah, so I'm, I want to talk about this one. This is the last painting that I made and what turned out to be the, the most um, inspired, I would say, of, of all of them. Due to the pandemic, I had way more time to devote to painting these, which turned out to be a, a blessing. Um, I only got through three paintings over the school year and the show is gonna be in June. And that means in June, I would have been painting all of them at once. And then when the pandemic hit and things needed to change, I then had the summer um, to devote to painting these. And I had this idea that I, I wanted to include this barn that I see on the travels from Minneapolis to Rochester that's, you know, an abandoned barn falling in, into, it's, it's buried in the ground, like very deep in the ground. Um, so I had that vision, but then I also wanted to include like down in Rochester, you can see these random hot air balloons. And, and so when I was, I was painting this one, I really felt the presence of my grandfather who died this past year. And he was a painter and I just feel like he was, you know, a part of this one. I feel like this is my strongest piece. And I know that it's that time I had to devote to it over the summer due to the pandemic. So that turned out to be a blessing. But one of the challenges was, was that my students, they began um, the process. It was supposed to be an in-class project and so last spring we had started, I showed them my process with two of my paintings and talked to them about why it's called vast and that we're exploring sky, weather, and then you can choose what you wanna have in your ground. And they had just made their sketches. I had gone through all seven second grade classes. Everybody made their sketches and then we transferred them onto watercolor paper. And then all of a sudden our school closed. And at first I put the project on hold because I thought we'd be able to come back to the classroom. And then it turned out we weren't coming back to the classroom. So then I was gonna have a summer studio um, where students could come to the school and work on it. And then we couldn't have summer school. So then by the end of the school year, I was planning this to be a distance learning project for the summer students would, I, I put a whole bunch of tools together, gave them all the supplies they would need um, if they needed them. And, and so then they had the summer to work on it. And then last fall, they, they turned in their paintings. So these are 35 students that put their time and energy over this last summer during this pandemic craziness um, to explore their, their idea that they had started. Um, and so it's really exciting to see that the time and attention they put into their work. And, and, the, and so this is 
Weekend Sunset by Madeline Berge. Madeline was inspired by her family's trip to Hayward, Wisconsin each year with her grandparents, mom and dad, brother, aunt and uncle and cousins. She painted the cabins they stayed in, one truck and a campfire at sunset. Due to COVID this past year, they weren't able to go to the cabin, but creating this painting made her feel better and remember the fun times they have had together. And this next one, I'm very excited to introduce Fly High by Jennifer Queasley, who is actually going to share with us. And so Jenny, if you're there, you can unmute yourself and share with us about what inspired your artwork and what is happening in your artwork. Okay. Hi, my name is Jenny. We live on a farm and it is close to the airport. The planes fly over our house all the time. They are really big. The planes make our dog Jack bark. Thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing with us. This next painting is by Crosby Miller. Crosby loves designing and building structures. He enjoys using his imagination to come up with cool ideas for buildings. He was inspired by his love of sports and the US Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, home to the Minnesota Vikings. I was in the process of getting a photo of the stadium for him to draw from right before the school closed due to COVID. I can tell from looking at his artwork that he found a picture and depicted it precisely. With the level of detail that Crosby put into his art, I can envision him being an architect one day. We also have another student joining us today. Um, this is Sunset Sky by Zoe Bushman. And Zoe, would you like to share what inspired your artwork and tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So what inspired me is I always like in the summer how the sunsets always get really pretty and how the houses always like we have a fence and a lot of trees around our house, but the sun still looks very big compared to our house. Our house just seems like super small, but I always love how the birds always fly over and how it's always like different colors combined in the sunset. Thank you so much, Zoe, for sharing. This is called Ashes by Gavin Olson. It was inspired by Mount St. Helens in Washington. At the time we started the vast project in art class, he had just read a book about it. He knew immediately that his artwork would be of this volcano erupting with smoke and ash filling the sky and the lava spreading down to the town and trees below on the earth. This last artwork, Reese's, Reese Lechner's artwork is of Split Rock Lighthouse in Duluth. Her family went to see it two years ago. During that visit, Reese learned that it only lights up on November 10th each year to honor the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald and her crew. This is why she called her painting last light of the night. It is a fitting title with the sunset in the background and full of colors that she loves. And I wanna thank the Rochester Art Center again for hosting our exhibit. Well, thank you for bringing your work and your students work. It really brights up our space and I think it's so, really is just full of joy and, and a sense of connection. Um, so um, now we can open up to questions from the audience. So you can type your question in the chat or you can also unmute yourself and ask, ask your question. Um, we have a lot of, seems that there is a lot of good positive reactions um, and comments about your work. Um, yeah. Well, it looks like we had one uh, question asking if the works are for sale. Right. That's, That's very positive. <laughs> um, That's a good question. I yes, had to double check the contract and it looks like they are, right, yeah, Joy? They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are. The mine are for mine are not the student artwork, so. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so if anyone is interested in um, purchasing one of Joy's work, they can contact the Art Center um, and I will be happy to help facilitate. So thank you for that inquiry. Um, yeah, there was a faith is asking, uh, what, what was the most difficult one to paint? Um, I would, <laughs> that's a difficult question because I struggled with a couple of them. Um, definitely the conversation, the one with the horses, I could not, like I knew in my mind what I wanted the clouds to look like and how I wanted them to like, go up the background um, and it was it was a struggle. There was a lot of different versions of me trying to get the effect that I wanted. Same with the derecho cloud. Um, the ones with clouds, you know, like I had this vision in my head and, and I had to remind myself what I tell my students all the time. Sometimes what we have in our minds, we have this perfect idea of what we want it to look like, but then it doesn't transfer to how we can paint or how we can draw, it, getting that perfectly from our mind to the paper can be a challenge. So I had to remind myself like, oh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like just, you know, just do your best. And, and so I just, I, but I had, I did work it over and over and over again to get it to a place where I'm like, okay, that's, that, that's good enough. Cause of course, like I'm, I learned in making my paintings that I could have reworked them and reworked them. I could, and at some point it's like done. Like at some point you got to put it aside. Cause I see things now that I'm like, oh, that, you know, if I could just go back and fix that little detail or something. And um, I, I, at some point this past year I had to say, okay, they're done. It helps to get an exhibition date. Cause it's like, then it's done. No more, no more edits. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I think, yeah, every every artist struggle with like that kind of, there's always time for changing something. Uh, Lara asks, uh, which one is your favorite? My favorite painting is the one called Afterlife. Um, oh, this one, this is my favorite. It is, um, the one I put the most attention to and I think spent the longest time on. Um, it was really tough. Well, then again, this is another one that was difficult, how to get that sky, how to make that sky look like the sun's going down and it's shifting over tonight. Um, but it's, you know, I, I still want those clouds like it was a cloudy day. And then reflections like the lighting, um, as I was painting, I, I recognized that I wasn't always paying attention to, if I put light in the sky in a certain spot, then there should be light on the ground in that spot. And um, I could have paid a little bit more attention to that in different ones, but, but yeah, like light source and making sure that there is, you know, so that that's why there's like a difference that, front trees have a little bit more highlights than the back trees because that like light is changing. Yeah, there is a lot of attention actually in like this sort of very accurate picture of the um, of the landscape, right? It, it looks easy, but it, it takes a lot of <laughs> like, it takes a lot of attention and, and analysis of, of how is this structure, so. Um, thank you for sharing a little bit of your process with us. Uh, Jenny's asking, um, who's your favorite artist or there's one that inspired this work? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, my actual favorite artist has, does not, <laughs> is not even close to my own artwork here. Um, Helen Frankenthaler. I just loved learning about her process of pouring large cans of paint just directly on the canvas and working across the floor on these huge, huge canvases and um, her abstract expressionism of 
you know, you can get an idea of what she was thinking or what she was trying to get the person to feel or envision, but it's, it doesn't look realistic. And, and I, no matter what I've tried throughout my years of doing art and creating art, I, I struggle. I, I'm too realistic. I, I try to abstract things and I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think I learned this either it's in my genes because my grandfather and my dad both have um, a strong attention to detail and making things realistic that I don't know if it's just how I work. Um, I do, do have ideas of like future work of getting, trying to do abstract expressionism because um, that's like my favorite style of art. So just, I don't know. It's totally doesn't doesn't match mine right now, <laughs> but it is my favorite. Thank you for your question, Jenny and Faith and Laura. Um, I think we have another question. Um, oh, Julia, uh, is is the arrangement at, at the exhibit something you planned, or was the exhibit tech looks great? That's a good question. Um, I had once after I had made them all, I put them in the hallway of my apartment building and tried to arrange them in what order they would go well in. But then when I dropped them off, I, I just put my faith in the Rochester Art Center to do their, you know, their curating. And, and so, you know, I, I probably the Maggie at the Rochester Art Center is who decided on that. I'm not sure, but um, I love, I mean, it just flows. I mean, when I saw them on the wall, I was like, whoa, they look better than I even imagined they looked. Like, like they just, the colors just flow in the, yeah, it's perfect. I love it. Well, we work very collaboratively here. I believe Zoe had a quite a hand in the curation. Um, but she's too humble to, to mention that. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was Maggie and I, well, we generally, you know, makes it make a really good team. We were, you know, the way we arranged it, we thought that it would be beautiful to make a full day, you know, yeah. and not necessarily, I know that they're not necessarily met like a certain time of the day, you know, but for us, we try to like, try to keep that line of landscape going from the left to the right and then noticing that the first uh, painting is at dawn and the last painting is at sunset and so it's kind of like you have a full day in the country just by walking into you know the museum I love it so that was uh that that was our thinking yeah. and I'm glad I'm glad it works out yeah And then maybe that is why it, it just feels really stronger than, than when I was just looking at all of them individually because they're telling a story that I didn't even know was there. So great work. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the painting. Yeah. Um, I actually have a question for Zoe and Jenny, if it's okay to ask another question. Yeah. No pressure. But um, I was wondering um, if uh, if your teacher Joy show you painting her paintings before, and if there's something that you really like in her paintings that you were trying to like, you know, emulate. Zoe and Jenny, are you still there? We're here. Can you ask the question again? Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's something that uh, Zoe and Jenny like about Joy's paintings and, you know, uh, if they can share with us. I like the horses because the clouds actually look like real clouds and the horses look like they're actually really moving. Mm -hmm. And they're talking to each other. Um, I like how that 
she always represents like all the colors of the sky, but how how big it is and how small compared to like the ground size and stuff is. Um, yeah, here you go, your toughest critics, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zoe and Jenny, for sharing. It's great. Um, I can't see if we have more questions. Well, there is a lot of positive feedback. So I hope that, Joe, you get to like read it later or like right now. Um, well, I have another, uh, another question for you uh, while we wait for more. Um, you mentioned that maybe you want to try to work in something abstract, but do you have a plan for your next project? Yes, I do. Um, so I have this vision of flowers without their petals. I don't know what that's about. Well, I kind of do it. I know I do kind of do know what it's about. Um, I just that's all I have so far. <laughs> and <laughs> is that you know, I don't know what it's exactly going to look like. Um, but I definitely want to explore mixing lots of my own colors. You know, I, it seemed like this was all really realistic in this series that I, you know, stick to kind of main colors where it, I started to mix colors and I don't want to do more of that. And so like, I think this exploration of the flowers without petals will give me some freedom of mixing my own colors and making new colors. And, and then I also do have this vision for having an abstract expressionist series, but I have no idea what that will look like when I do it. <laughs> It's, it's still a dream. Um, when my sister visited me today, I, I was reminded that this dream of actually even having my work, having a series of work and having an exhibition has been a dream of mine for about 20 years. So when I graduated from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, I had a senior show. And then I went on to work in magazine and graphic design. So I really didn't have uh, any, you know, I wasn't painting, I wasn't drawing anymore. And back in college, I had written down in my, in a, in this dream journal or the great notebook is what it was supposed to be called from the creative problem solving class I took. And I, I, one of my dreams was to have a series of paintings that would be in an exhibit in a gallery. And so like, it took me 20 years to get here, but it's pretty amazing. And I feel like it's just the beginning. <laughs> it's definitely just the beginning. And I think we are very honored that you, you know, you had, you, you were having this experience at the art center. It's, it's great. And it, it just looks amazing in the space too. It feels just perfection, right? It's beautiful and you can see it from across the river, but don't let that stop you from coming in. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from the one of the two Rochester centers. Um, so it's interesting that you your paintings are almost in conversation with your students' work. Have you collaborated with your students before, and or will you do that again in the future? Yes, I actually had plans for this year too, of what I wanted um, to give my second graders an opportunity to do. And this, this pandemic just won't end. So it's kind of changed some things, but um, I, there's, a, there's a project that, well, I love, personally love oil pastel watercolor resist. And so I, there's a first and second grade project 
where students observe a landscape photograph and an animal photograph and use oil pastel and watercolor to create and they just amazing results like just totally gallery worthy results from this project that I want at some point to give them an opportunity to have that work on display somewhere. And so I had been in touch with um, Semba Gallery on Broadway and showed them and they were interested. Um, and so at some point, like hopefully that will come together. Um, it's, this year has been really limited. I'm traveling on a cart. So art's been a little bit different. And so, but yeah, I, I think I need to show, my students love seeing my work examples for the projects we do, that I should be showing them more of this. And I really got a sense of how this influenced them um, by the work the 35 students turned in. That, um, but, I, but I also got a sense from all the students when we started this project and I shared my process and shared just two paintings I had done, when I gave them the opportunity to come up with their own idea, every single student was engaged. Every single student had was just like pouring out their heart on their page. And um, so that was really beautiful to see. And so I definitely wanna make sure that it continues to happen. Um, we have one question that's more logistic. Um, Jen is asking, what are the hours? So I'm just going to type them in the chat. It's uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wednesday to, uh, to, to Sunday. Yeah, everybody's what welcome. About, what about this weekend? Are, is the Rochester Art Center open on Easter? Good point. No, unfortunately. <laughs> um, due to staffing constraints, we are going to have to be closed on Sunday. Um, but Saturday. But another really great thing to note is that we are free through um, May 9th because of the We Are Water exhibition from the city. Um, so another really great uh, excuse to get your families down here. And then um, students 21 and under are always free. So I would love to have you guys visit, have everybody visit. Oh, well, I want to like, I want to share something. I think that, you know, this past year among the many essential workers and, you know, essential profession that uh, heroes and people that came out, uh, you know, out of this thing that we're going through this pandemic, I do want to say that teachers really are, are like, I think they're heroes. And especially like teachers like you that work with, you know, young, a younger population um i need to be in person and you know there's a whole it's such an important moment uh being a kid and learning about art right so i want to express my appreciation for that and i think i i maybe i can speak on behalf of the art center for that it's really great to see how you were able to uh, engage with the students through your art and have them have a moment of reflection about you know what's the beauty of the environment you know um, and I was wondering if you want to share a little bit about the process of, you know, collecting those artworks and making them, it's a whole thing, right? It's, it's complicated to like get the artwork from all the old 35 students is pretty massive uh, effort, right? Yes. Yes, there were lots of mass emails to families. <laughs> and then a lot, I'm glad that it's kind of a positive thing that, uh, the pandemic kind of just kept changing things because then it gave kids an opportunity. Okay, one more last chance. Anybody who would like to turn in their paintings. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of communication. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I teach K through two and there's a lot of freedom at that age to be creative and imaginative and explore and express and really hope to cultivate that into my students that they they form an appreciation that will carry throughout their lifetime even if it's not a passion or something they want to pursue that they they will have an appreciation for it 
I just have to say as a parent of somebody who, you know, my child was in second grade last year when the pandemic started and knowing that you continued this project through the summer and gave them that opportunity to stay engaged and um, connected is really valuable. It was just such a, a shock to the system when everything ended. So, um, so that was really a wonderful experience, I think, for all of your students. Thank you. And thank you, Zoe and Jenny, for sharing tonight. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, unless there's more questions from the audience, uh, I also think that, you know, um, if you have more ideas and questions and want to give Joyce more feedback, we can, uh, you can always email us and get in touch with Joy. We can put you in touch with Joy. Um, uh, is there something else that you want to tell us tonight, Joy, before, uh, you know, we kind of close this talk? Oh, there's one final question from a student. What has been the inspiration for your artwork? I would have to say I'm heavily influenced from being a teacher these last nine, you know, eight, seven or eight, nine years. Um, because as I left MCAD 20 years ago and pursued graphic design, my passion was always drawing and painting. And so becoming a teacher, I, I have become a little bit more free of doing my own art too and getting back into drawing and painting. So it's, I feel like I was inspired to teach students and inspire them, but in return, I'm, I'm being inspired as well. Well, looking at the kids, kids painting, there's like some really, really good ones. <laughs> I love, I love there's like a whole variety from the more representational and precise to the like more abstract. When you read the title and you see the painting, you're like, wow, like that's contemporary art, really. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's, um, so. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Joy, for being with us and for sharing your process, your, you know, inspiration and your work with us. And I hope everybody that was here tonight uh, will be able to see the work in person. And if not, uh, you know, there's always this talk and we will have, we, we, can, we can have more contents to show Joy's work online from a safe distance too. And thank you, Rochester Art Center, for all you're doing for the community down here and, um, and for letting us have this exhibit. We, a big thank you. Pleasure is all ours. Thank you, Joy. <laughs>